Grace and peace, you guys. Welcome to the Standard of Truth podcast, where we discuss all things social, cultural, political, and theological from a biblical perspective. In today's apostasy news, uh, the Roman Catholics are finding themselves in a bit of a pickle. Uh, Pope Francis, I know I'm late to the party. This is old news. However, I wanted to talk about it because I believe that it is relevant to what's going on in the world and how believers just need to be thinking and moving and paying attention and discerning the signs of the times. Uh, but Pope Francis, he has the Vatican clutching their pearls as he asserts that same-sex couples should not be precluded from receiving a blessing from the mother church. Now I need to unpack this a bit because for one, I'm not a Roman Catholic. I'm actually a Protestant and I stand with those who protested against the idea that salvation is by grace plus works plus being a member of the Roman Catholic church. I believe that one is saved by grace through faith alone, in Christ alone, to the glory of God alone. So essentially, I affirm the five solas of the Protestant Reformation. However, according to news coming from Rome, Pope Francis released a document explaining how those who are seeking God's blessings shouldn't be subjected to strict moral scrutiny, right? Like those were his words, not mine. Essentially, Pope Francis is attempting to find a middle ground and is trying to come up with situations or circumstances in which same-sex couples could still be blessed by the church without blurring the lines within marriage as a sacrament. Not quite sure how that works. However, from a theological perspective, I need to flesh out the whole idea of receiving a blessing. So according to Roman Catholic theology, blessings are called sacramentals because they prepare the receiver to receive the grace of the sacraments and help them to grow to be more like Christ. They articulate that blessings consist of prayer, scripture, and sometimes a special ritual sign. So you may have seen Roman Catholic bishops or priests uh, or deacons blessing objects or people in the name of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, I want to read to you a portion of the Roman Catholic Catechism, which states, Indeed, the more a blessing concerns ecclesial and sacramental life, the more its administration reserved to the orden, to the ordained ministry. This is from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1669. Often with the participation of the local parish community gathered in prayer. Whenever an ordained minister is present, he should be called upon to give the blessing. When a representative of the Catholic Church is conferring a blessing onto someone, it is often accompanied by a specific sign, such as the laying on of hands, the sign of the cross, or the sprinkling of holy water, end quote. Now, in all fairness, uh, when this news hit, right? Like the Associated Press, they reported that the Vatican compiled a document that reiterates and reaffirms that marriage is a lifelong union between a man and a woman. And it stressed that the blessings in question must not be tied to any specific Catholic celebration or religious service, and it should not be conferred at the same time as a civil union ceremony. Um, moreover, it explained that the blessings can't use set rituals or even involve the clothing and the gestures that belong in a wedding. So basically, this is Rome's idea of placating, in my opinion, to the LGBTQ LMNOP mob without really honoring their demands. 
In the same Associated Press article, the Associated Press reports that last month the Vatican said it is permissible under certain circumstances for trans people to be baptized as Catholics and serve as godparents. They also stated that the Pope has said that being homosexual is not a crime. Well, um, I agree. He is right. In many municipalities, it isn't a crime anymore, but I digress. And then um, months later, after becoming the Pope, Francis said, quote, who am I to judge speaking in reference to the sexual orientation of priests? So I'm I'm sorry, but um I'm I'm a little I'm a little confused. Um aren't 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 you like the head of the Roman Catholic religion? Like aren't 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 you like the head honcho in charge? And and according to Roman Catholic doctrine, don't don't you speak ex cathedra? Like according to Roman Catholic doctrine. A pope speaking ex cathedra on issues of faith or morals is considered infallible, meaning he cannot be wrong. So how was this working out for you, Pope Francis? Like, how was your infallibility um, somehow working in harmony or, or, or I, I don't know, like, how is your, your infallibility working with your position on these issues, they, they don't seem to be aligned. Um, the article continues and says regarding the blessings that such blessings for same-sex couples should not be denied. It offers an extensive and broad definition of the term blessing in scripture to insist that people seeking a transcendent relationship with God and are looking for his love and mercy shouldn't be held up to an impossible moral standard to receive it. Let me read the quote for you. It says, quote, for those seeking a blessing should not be required to have prior moral perfection, end quote. First of all, none of us, homosexual or heterosexual included, I would say have any sort of moral perfection with or without the blessing of the Catholic church. So that's the first problem right there. Uh, the fact that the Catholic church from their theological position believes that you can earn right standing with God because you're saved by grace plus your works. That is the problem. They actually believe that there is some good in some of us when scripture affirms that none of us are good. Um, according to scripture, all of us, apart from a salvific relationship with Christ alone, we are all jacked up and none of us will ever meet God's standard of righteousness. That's why we need a righteous substitute, one who is completely and perfectly righteous, not like the Pope or the Cardinal or the Bishop, but continuing on, we are told that, quote, there is no intention to legitimize anything, but rather to open one's life to God, to ask for his help to live better, and also to invoke the Holy Spirit so that the values of the gospel may be lived with greater faithfulness, end quote. Okay, this is really confusing um, because my, I guess my question is, how is that even possible? Like, how are you in a same-sex relationship and you intend to invoke the help of the Holy Spirit to live a life of greater faithfulness when your mere identification with your sexual immorality, you're demonstrating that you, one, you don't belong to Christ, and that, two, you love your sin more than being faithful to God? Like, how does Rome intend to ride out this slippery slope as if the rainbow community is going to be satisfied with the idea of, oh, look, we can receive blessings now. Now we can't get married and be recognized by the Roman Catholic Church, but look, we can get a blessing. Like this, all of this, you guys, this is just political virtue signaling by a Pope who is obviously 
inconsistent with his own theological positions and he is simply trying to be a man pleaser. According to this article, the Vatican holds that marriage is an indissolvable union between a man and a woman. And as a result, it is long opposed same-sex marriage and considers homosexual acts to be intrinsically disordered. Nothing in the new document changes that teaching. So my question is, what's the point of the blessing again? Like, what are we blessing? Here, here's the truth. God is very gracious and he is so merciful in that the fact that any of us are still alive despite our sin and our crimes against him, it demonstrates his loving kindness and his long suffering with those who are his enemy. But this is, this is categorically why Roman Catholicism as a religion of grace plus works, it is a damnable heresy and must be rejected. Because God doesn't want our goodwill or our half-baked good deeds. Why? Because it's tainted with sin. And since God is perfectly holy and perfectly righteous to be accepted by him, a little blessing from the Pope is not going to do it. You don't got that kind of power, my guy. Okay, like the Pope, he just does it. Like you don't get to keep your sin or have your pet sin recognized and blessed in any sense, and then think that you were made right with God. No, we must all come to Christ in repentance, broken, turning away from our sin, not embracing it, and then expecting it to be blessed by God and others. That is not how it works. We already knew that Rome was apostate. But my hope is that those who are clinging to salvation plus works, plus being part of the Roman Catholic religion, I am praying that they will abandon that false God worship and idolatry and recognize that it is Jesus and nothing else. Christ is an all sufficient savior and the good works that are wrought in you as a result of your new life in Christ, they are done because we've already been justified not to be justified. You cannot earn eternal life. The cost is way outside of your pay grade, my friend. Faith in Christ and his finished work on the cross affords those who believe in eternal life and glorification with Christ. We sure don't deserve it. And it's not of any works done by us lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2.10 tells us that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The born again believer, we walk in the good works because they were prepared beforehand. We're not doing the good works to earn right standing and justification by a righteous and holy God. So let me know you guys, what do you think? Do you think it was appropriate for the Pope to make it permissible to grant blessings to same-sex couples, yet not permitting marriage between a same-sex couple? Or do you think that what the Pope did is consistent with his false damnable doctrine of grace plus works plus Rome? Like, do you agree that Roman Catholicism is a false gospel that saves no one? Or do you think that it is a viable and permissible belief system that corresponds to the New Testament idea of a biblical church? Let me know down below in the comment section, whatever your thoughts are on the issue, I'd love to hear from you and I'm interested to read your comments. So until next time, you guys, grace and peace.